What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Will. I'm back with another episode of the Inspired Geeks podcast. Now, today, I want to talk about Resident Evil. Now, recently, Capcom held an event about a week ago um, talking about the newest entry in the series, Resident Evil 8 or Resident Evil The Village. And, uh, and they also released a demo for the PS5, which I got to try out, and you are going to be watching some uh, gameplay of me actually trying out the demo um, and I'm also going to just talk about my thoughts about it and some theories that I have about the next entry in the Resident Evil series so buckle in guys it's going to be it's going to be good now before I even talk about a demo um, I'll just say this Resident Evil has been one of my favorite gaming franchises since the PS1 days like I would say it's Metal Gear and Resident Evil was like the two games that really uh, struck me as as video games that could really suck you in into the story and care about the characters um, and what you're doing. Like they are just like top tier games in my opinion. And as a filmmaker, um, these two games just really drew me in with their you know story, cinematic quality, all that good stuff. Well, so I've just been a fan of these games, but. Particularly Resident Evil, I have so many great memories of the series, um, being scared playing it at my cousin's house at a PS1, um, getting scared by Resident Evil 3, um, and Nemesis busting in and uh, freaking everybody out at nighttime. So just lots of good memories with the series, um, getting attached to the characters like Leon and Chris and Jill and Claire. Um, and, you know, just so many uh, fun times with the games. And I just appreciate Capcom for that. Um, and I also, I hate to go off on a tangent, um, but I do, um, kind of appreciate the live action, uh, Resident Evil movies, uh, with Mila Jovovich. Um, they aren't very good, but I do like the first two, the first one and the second one, uh, Apocalypse, that's kind of closer to the games. Um, they're kind of guilty pleasures of mine. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> um, but yeah. I say all that just to say that I'm just a huge fan of Resident Evil. Um, so what I'm about to say is just coming from, you know, the perspective of love and, and from a genuine fan of the series. Now, I got to say, um, I love the games. I love Resident Evil, you know, one through four. Um, I love the survival horror aspect from the earlier games. Um, and then I loved what they did with Resident Evil four with, um, how they started to shift towards action and then Resident Evil 5 um, and then Resident Evil 6 really let me down. Um, that was just such a, um, <laughs> I hate to say it, but it was such a garbage game um, and it just was not good at all. Um, and it really killed the franchise, really. It put the franchise on ice for like, you know, four to five years until Resident Evil 7. Um, and we got a switch to first person view um, and it just really put the franchise back on course. It Resident Evil was re, Resident Evil 7. I mean, was just um, that first person switch um, perspective switch. Um, it definitely did wonders for the series uh, playing Resident Evil 7 in the dark and surround sound was, you know, a surreal experience. Um, definitely brought back the survival horror aspect that was missing. From the series and it just re rejuvenized the franchise for me um and i was you know terribly hyped when it came out and it's definitely one of my favorite survivor horror games uh ever but it still doesn't touch the original re games um sorry um but i did enjoy it a lot so i say all that to say resident evil 8 is continuing the story of ethan from resident evil 7 and this time he it looks like uh, his daughter get skipped out kid kidnapped i mean um his daughter with his wife mia who we searched for in resident evil 7 they are settled down and now they are trying to live a normal life after the events of resident evil 7 dealing with the baker family and um Alyssa, um and all that craziness and molded and all that crazy stuff that happened in that game um so they have a daughter but it looks like she gets kidnapped by this you know witches or vampires and Ethan's out to uh, save his daughter and it looks like Mia may have gotten killed um, if you watch some of the other trailers but yeah that's basically the premise um, a lot of fans don't like Ethan because he doesn't have the personality that some of the other characters uh, in the series do but I actually kind of enjoyed Ethan because it kind of 
it kind it kind of allowed us to kind of put the player in that zone and get really immersed in the world. So I didn't really mind, but in this one, um, it seems we'll get more backstory into Ethan. I have my own theories, but anyway, now the demo. I did play the demo. It is called uh, Maiden, and it's similar to the. If you ever played the Resident Evil Seven demo, it's like a demo. There's no combat or anything, um, and you're going through this castle. You're just really checking out the graphics, the environment, and I gotta say, uh, the atmosphere for Resident Evil Eight, the village, exploring this demo is really great. Um, it has a really gothic feel to it. Um, the sound design is also fantastic um i was playing with my headphones the uh playstation 5 uh 3d pulse headset it, i definitely can tell it's going to lead to some very tense moments and a lot of jump scares when uh resident evil 8 the village comes out um i also dig the new characters uh there is this tall lady vampire lady called lady uh Dishramu. I can't really pronounce her name, but I'll just call her Lady D for now. <laughs> Lady D for now. Um, and her daughters who are witches and also vampires. And um, they seem like they could be cool. They could seem like they'll be, you know, some playing a similar role to what the Baker family did in Resident Evil um, 7. But in the demo, it's all just a, a visual tour um as you're seeing in the footage that's playing while i'm talking um there's not there's again there's no combat or anything it just was a feel for um the environment of the castle um some light puzzle solving um and really some great sound design and you know just to get a feel for the game it'll probably get updated like the resident evil 7 demo did with you know combat new areas um closer to release which is may 7th um, but again, great demo. If you have a PS5, I'd definitely say try it out for yourself just to get a feel for um, the environment we'll be playing in. Um, and also get a little taste of the new characters, um, which is cool. I'm um, uh, the character I did want to point out, though, that in the demo, you play as a nameless character um, that seemingly gets killed at the end by Lady D. And I was thinking that when we played Resident, the Resident Evil 7 demo, we came to find out that the person that we played in the demo was actually Clancy, the camera guy that you see in that little, uh, it's not a mini game, but it's like a, in the prologue of the game, of the full game. So I'm thinking this character that we play as in the demo might actually, you know, be a significant um, character in the full game. We don't know yet. But again, you know, I'm down for it. Now, I also noticed that there was a little teacup in the in the demo, and I feel like there's more to that. And I definitely feel like they may update the demo um, and add a new area. And again, maybe some new combat um, areas, too, to show off the, uh, you know, the improvements that they've done with the combat in the game. So that's really cool. I really love what they did with the, you know, Resident Evil 7 demo, where they kind of added things as we got closer to release. So very cool um but the demo again is just it's it's impressive it's really short um so there's not a whole lot to say about it there's no real um like i said there's no combat or anything but really fun demo it's free so might as well give it a try um i also wanted to talk about some theories that i had for resident evil 8 the village and talk about some of the the topics that i've been talking about with fans on uh reddit and game facts well i don't know <laughs> game faq um <laughs> that was a joke and no offense to anybody out there i swear to god that wasn't a shot at anybody um but yeah i just want to say that um so so a discussion that i was having with uh some fans about resident evil 8 was that a lot of fans seem to have a problem with the switch to first person view. And again, I I have no problem with it because I definitely think it saved the franchise. It definitely adds to the immersion of it. Um, and I do think that, um, and I do hope that they do add to Ethan's personality in Resident Evil 8. We learn a little bit more about his backstory. 
I have my own theories. I'm thinking maybe he used to work for Umbrella. He used to be a uh, secret agent. Um, I even think he may have some connections to Hunk. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> that's just my own fan theory. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping, you know, a lot of fans seem to take issue with that. But I think, you know, having that, that switch to first person just, it just makes it more real and, and it's easier for you to get sucked into the world. So I have no complaints there. Uh, also, it seems the big thing that people have with uh, Resident Evil 8 is the fact that there are vampires and werewolves in the game. Now, I... I mean, come on, y'all. This is Resident Evil we're talking about. The whole series is over the top. Uh, there's been some crazy moments. You know, Wesker with his Matrix powers. We got giant snake boss bosses in the first game, giant alligator in the second game. We got things like liquors and tyrants and mutant plants and hunters. Um, <laughs> you know, so it, the whole series, it, it fits like... Who says vampires and werewolves can't be biological weapons? You know, I definitely feel like there's a new virus involved. Um, it could always be, you know, the T-Virus had like leeches. So it could be like bats and leeches combined and created a new virus. Boom, vampires. So I have zero problem with that. But some fans think that's too much. I don't think it's too much at all. I mean, I'll leave it up to you, the listeners. Do you guys think that's too much? I don't. Um, I'm, I'm all for it, man. Resident Evil has always just been, you know, over the top. So let, let's just have fun with it, guys, and see where it goes. Like, let's not pass judgment before we get to play the game. The game doesn't come out until May 7th, uh, 2021. So, you know, just chill a little bit, you know. Um, <laughs> um, and, and like I said, and then another really... um really cool thing an interesting um tidbit is it looks like chris chris redfield one of the only returning cast members from um the previous games that have jumped to the uh first person perspective games seems like he may be the villain because it looks like he's working with um the witches and lady d and the vampires he gives ethan's uh daughter away to them and also on a cover of the game it looks like he's turning into a werewolf which you know i'm wondering does he get infected like you know are they really going to turn chris into a villain in these new trilogy of games because they say this is the end of ethan's story so resident evil 9 we might get a new character or we might go back to someone like jill who we haven't heard from since resident evil 5 uh and that's a whole nother story <laughs> Capcom, side note, Capcom, why are you treating Jill like that? Like, Jill is a fan favorite, and, you know, you guys have neglected to put her in any of the uh, recent games after five. Fans have been asking for her for years. Come on, Capcom. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I, that was a really interesting thing. Like, I've had my debates and, and theories maybe – uh, Chris is brainwashed um, to helping the villains in Resident Evil 8. I don't know, but it's really interesting to see, you know, where they go with that. Um, also, another complaint that I saw from people uh, when they saw the trailer during the event was a merchant who uh, is doing a similar role to the merchant from Resident Evil 4. Um, but he's like really overweight and obese and they think that's over the top. I thought it was funny. Like, I, <laughs> I have no problem with that either. Um, I don't know why some fans are taking offense to that. I don't think it's a shade to anybody. Um, but, you know, what, what can you do? I mean, it's just a character in the game. Like, some people, just because he's overweight, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's Resident Evil, man. Come on. Everything's over the top in that universe, so... Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm hyped to see a lot of Resident Evil 4 elements are present in the new um, Resident Evil 8 Village game. Like we get the uh, the new uh, menu and inventory system that's very similar to Resident Evil 4. Um, the village surrounding the castle that you go into uh, from the trailers that we've seen looks very similar to Resident Evil 4. And there are rumors that capcom is getting ready to remake resident evil 4 kind of like how they did uh resident evil 2 3 
So it seems like they were going to reuse a lot of assets and um, release Resident Evil 4 coming soon. And I'm hyped for it. Resident Evil 4, again, top tier uh, Resident Evil game. Um, also, Capcom announced that there will be a multiplayer component to Resident Evil 8 called RE-verse, which looks like a, to be honest, it looks like a generic multiplayer shooter. You're just using a different Resident Evil characters like, you know, Leon and, and Claire and Jill. And you're just shooting each other in team deathmatch. So I don't really know how that's going to go from what I've seen from the trailer and the beta just started uh, recently this week from what I've seen with that. It seems really generic, um, but it's free. It'll be attached to Resident Evil um, 8 The Village when that hits stores on May 7th. So I will definitely play it, see how it is. Um, it could be a fun distraction. It's, you know, a free add-on. I definitely probably wouldn't pay any money for it. Um, it kind of seems like, you know, Capcom is really focusing on multiplayer because Earlier last year with Resident Evil 3 Remake, they included Resident Evil Resistance, which was this um, it was this multiplayer game where one person played as a mastermind and other players played as survivors. And like the mastermind had to stop them from escaping a facility. So they had access to like a tyrant, zombies and stuff. So that game, it was a little fun. I played it for a couple of weeks and then got bored of it and never played it again. And also, it had issues like the Mastermind was clearly OP, overpowered, um, because he could just kill everybody instantly once he released a tyrant. And, you know, it just wasn't very fun to play as a survivor and just a whole of other issues. So I hope they can, you know, address that with RE-verse, just make it a fun team deathmatch uh, multiplayer shooter. I don't have a whole lot of hope for it, but it could be fun, so... Fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> but yeah, overall, I'm super excited for Resident Evil 8 The Village. Um, I love the new tone, the atmosphere. Um, I'm down for the vampires and werewolves. Um, the demo, Again, the demo was really fun, even though there's no combat. Like, I just got a little taste of what the finished game will be. Super hyped. The new characters, um, also interested to see where that goes. I'm interested to see if um, Chris really is going to be a villain. Uh, are we going to see any other classic characters like uh, Claire or Jill or uh, Leon maybe popping up in the game? I hope so. Uh, but there was some other um, Resident Evil news, too, um, that they announced at this event while I'm talking about Resident Evil. And they talked about the new reboot movie, which finished shooting, I think, at the end of last year. And the cast is really strong. Um, and they say it's based on the first two games. So Resident Evil 1 in the Spencer Mansion and Resident Evil 2 um, in Raccoon City. Uh, I'm really hyped for that. Some fans don't like that because Jill is played by uh, the actress who played Ghost in Ant-Man and Wasp. Um, she's Jill. And some people have issues with, you know, her her race. She's half black and half white. I don't care. Like, I think she's a great actress. So. You know, and Leon being um of Arab descent, as somebody said, again, I don't care. I think they, as long as the actors can do justice to the, the games, the story, the tone, creature design, um, I'm down for it. So, and it's, it's definitely going to be better than the Mila Jovovich movies. No shade to them, but those movies just were a uh, middle finger to all of the fans. Um <laughs> And they also announced a Netflix animated series starring Leon and Claire. Um, it's, it's based in the universe of the games, and it's all CGI animated. Um, so it'll be a series, and it's coming to Netflix this year as well. I'll definitely check that out. Um, and there's supposed to be another live-action Resident Evil series coming to Netflix, and it's based around Wesker's kids. Um, but there hasn't been much talk about that. I'm not sure if that's been canceled or not, but I'm also down for that. So a lot of good Resident Evil stuff coming. Um, again, Resident Evil 8, The Village comes out May 7th, 2021, this year. It's coming out for the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, Series S, PS4, Xbox One, PC. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited for it. I will definitely um, get my impressions of the full game when it comes out. 
Um, and if the demo gets any sort of update, I'll also talk about that on the podcast. Um, again, thank you guys so much for listening. We have more good stuff coming out, you know, throughout the rest of the year. I can't stress enough how many, you know, people have reached out to me saying they listen to the podcast. So I just appreciate it. We're still growing. We're still learning. And as always, if you would love to be on a podcast, if you're a content creator, a fan, um, always just reach out to us. You can email us at inspiredgeeks616 at gmail.com. Or you can follow us on Twitter. We are Inspired Geeks VA on Twitter. So, yeah, follow us. Hit us up. Uh, Willie and John will also be back. They're still around. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be setting up a Twitch channel, do some live gaming streams, all that fun stuff. So stick in there with us, guys. Uh, we definitely appreciate you and we will see you guys in the next episode. Peace.